What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a, another training walkthrough. Uh, this is going to be my full body C session, which I just did a couple of days ago. This is one of my upper body dominant full body sessions. Uh, I just kind of wanted to say right off the rip, if you saw my latest training video, uh, then you'll kind of be familiar with a couple of things. One, uh, I start off every workout with some decline crunches and leg raises. Uh, I do that today as well. I, I just did not film those. Uh, and then I kind of roughly mentioned my full body approach in my latest video, but basically I have four full body training sessions, A, B, C, and D. B and D are my lower body uh, dominant training sessions where I kind of start everything off with all of the lower body work and then I kind of finish with the upper body work. And then A and C are my upper body dominant sessions where I kind of start off with uh, upper body stuff, which is what we'll, we'll kind of get into in a second here. Uh, and then I kind of finish off with some leg work at the end. Uh, calf raises and abs go at the beginning no matter what. I kind of treat that as part of my warm up procedure. I guess you could say is uh, training my abs and calves uh, and I'm very fortunate to train in a gym that has a ton of different calf raises so I use four different calf raises on all four of my training sessions and on this particular one I use the seated calf raise um, whenever I kind of post seated calf raises on social media, I'll kind of uh, get a little bit of flack from people uh, talking about how the seated calf raise is really not necessary. Um, I, I don't agree with that. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, as you can tell by the fact that I'm doing the seated calf raises, I think that they're very beneficial. Um, I, I do think that it's, uh, you know, pretty... Uh, solidified by this point that uh, they don't bias the gastroc as much, but they do bias the soleus more. And so I do think that it is uh, quite worth your time uh, to have a seated calf raise at some point in your training week, uh, if you have that available to you. So now with my other three training sessions, the other three calf raises that I use are all straight leg calf raises that kind of bias the gastroc a little bit more, but um, I, I do still find value and merit in including uh, a soleus dominant uh, calf raise movement. From here, I kind of like to get into my delt work. So I'll do one exercise for my rear delts and then one for my side. Um, I, I like to start off with these for a couple uh, of reasons. One, uh, we're about to get into some pressing uh, and I kind of like to use these movements as uh, warm up uh, prop, you know, with warm up properties, I guess you could say. Uh, I, I kind of feel like getting some blood in my rear and side delts and just generally moving my shoulder capsule uh, through a variety of uh, ranges of motion is a really good way for me to get my shoulders warmed up before I get into uh, the heavy pressing movements. And so uh, I, I really kind of like to start off with uh, these movements for that reason, uh, but also because I think that my delts are one of my better body parts, particularly my side and rear delts. Uh, and so if I have kind of, you know, a bias in my physique that's a little bit more dominant than something else, I do kind of want to take advantage of that. Um, I, I know a lot of times people will kind of try and take their stronger points and kind of move them a little bit later towards the end of the session. And I think that that is a, a fine way to approach the training. I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se. Uh, but really, I, I also think that it's advantageous that if you have a particular area of your body that you feel is uh, more developed than everything else and you feel could help potentially separate you in a call out, uh, I think that uh, prioritizing that is a good idea. So uh, kind of twofold with doing my delt work at the beginning here. Um, th this is really hard to, you know, you can't see from the angle that I'm filming, but the reverse pec deck that I do for the rear delt is actually the exercise that's directly uh, behind. The, the lateral raise that I'm doing right now. So these two exercises are located right next to each other in the gym. And from like a time saving perspective, as well as a warm up perspective, and then as well as biasing the, uh, the strengths in my physique with my delts, uh, I, I just really feel like uh, this session, it gets off to a good start when I start it with my, uh, my delt work. So a uh, little reverse pec deck to start. And then I really like the Cybex lateral raise. You may not be able to tell from the video, but I'm only one weight 
on the, the stack away from having this thing maxed out. So kind of getting to the point where I'm either going to have to implement some pauses at the top, uh, increase the rep range, or maybe start doing it single arm, uh, or, or potentially even getting a gym pin. So uh, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there, but I still have a little bit of room that I can uh, work with that. From here, uh, we get into the pressing work and, and just kind of some of the, the push-focused upper body stuff, uh, getting into the chest and tricep stuff here. Uh, so this is uh, the flat hammer press, um, still kind of uh, up in the air as to whether this is considered a flat or a decline. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't really care, and I, I don't think it really matters. I, I think it biases the lower pec, and that's really all that matters. But uh, because this is a hammer strength machine, uh, I will always uh, start with, with this particular particular exercise uh, just because the resistance profile on hammer strength machines make these particularly difficult uh, to get short and our ability to fully shorten the muscle decreases as fatigue and that muscle accumulates. So if you're going to be using a hammer strength piece of equipment in your uh, training session, I think that it's best being put off towards the beginning. And then vice versa, this incline dumbbell press is a really good one-two combo with the uh, hammer strength press because the resistance profile is the exact opposite here. The resistance profile on a dumbbell press is considerably hev heavier in the, the lengthened and shortened position and drops off off quite a bit uh, towards the top and if I'm only doing two direct sets of chest in this exercise or excuse me in this training session uh, I, I really kind of think that it's beneficial for me to kind of structure those in a way that makes sense from a biomechanics perspective so that I can have the the longest runway of uh, progression uh, th that I can use. Th these dumbbell presses, as I've been in my mini cut, have kind of gotten harder and harder and harder. Uh, and I, I, lately I've been struggling just to kind of hold that at around four or five reps. So uh, I, I'm kind of in the point where I'm going to be adding in some food into my diet here and getting over this mini cut. So we should see that progress uh, going forward. But uh, these past couple of weeks, that, that, that lift has really been a big struggle for me. From here, we move into a Star Trek decline press, and I set this up in a way that biases the triceps heavily. Uh, you can kind of see that I'm, I'm taking a very narrow grip here. My thumb is actually not even on the machine at all. Um, and then I have the seat set up all the way at the top so that the path uh, that it forces me and biases the triceps a little bit more. Uh, I've posted this exercise on my YouTube channel before and it's been a staple that I've been doing for a long time. So that really isn't anything new there if, if you've been following the channel for a little bit. And then my tricep uh, isolation movement is going to be this tricep press down here. I'm really, really liking uh, the, the press down. You know, this is kind of one of those staples bread and butter movements that's kind of been around forever uh, but for whatever reason I'm just kind of finding a really good uh, groove with this and I, I really like using this straight bar here it really allows me to, to place my grip in a position where I can uh, kind of minimize a lot of joint stress on my wrist and elbows and everything the, the only thing that I'm really kind of struggling with and you may notice as I kind of get towards the end of the set here is because you kind of have to brace with your midsection uh, on this exercise a lot it, it kind of gets hard to stabilize as you get closer to, to failure. One of the things that I've actually kind of thought about doing is putting on a dip belt and having some weight hang from my waist. I actually saw Dorian Yates do that in Blood and Guts where he would do his tricep pushdowns with a dip belt on and have some extra weight around his waist so that he could, could, could kind of counter that force. So maybe as I get stronger, uh, I'll kind of uh, play around with that a little bit. Uh, but aside from that, the, the, the lateral raise and then two sets of chest and two sets of triceps, that's all the push work. Uh, starting to get into some of the pull work here. Uh, obviously, we started the session off with the, the rear delt fly, so we have that rear delt stimulus here. Uh, but I also like to have one direct movement for my lats and one for my upper back. So my lat movement on this session is this uh, bilateral cable pull down that you're seeing here. Uh, again, another just staple movement, just a simple neutral grip uh, bilateral pull down uh, but this particular handle uh, really connects well with my lats and it, it really allows me to get a really good uh, grip width to, to really bias the, the lats there. 
I will also use the same attachment for a lat biased cable row uh, on my full body D workout. So this, uh, this handle gets used a lot for me, whether it's being used in a pull down or whether it's being used in a row. I just really like the shape of it and, and the, the, the way that it kind of puts me in a really advantageous uh, position to recruit my lats. And obviously because it's bilateral, uh, it, it's very efficient with the, the time. And then my, my upper back movement is the T bar row here. Um, today's a film was the first time it, you may notice that I have like a rolled up yoga mat uh, in my chest. This is the first time that I've done that on this particular uh, clip that you're watching and I think I'm going to stick with that going forward. Uh, this particular T-bar, uh, when you're kind of getting into the sternal portion of uh, my upper body, I feel like it's kind of shallow there. So by adding in this rolled up yoga mat, it kind of uh, gives me something to keep contact with my chest uh, on that. So I'm, I'm probably going to stick with that going forward. This was four plates for a solid five today and uh, really looking forward to just kind of creeping that up uh, and, and, and getting every last little bit out of this. I'd love to hit four and a half plates on this sometime uh, by the end of the year. Whether or not that's doable, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to try uh, my ass off to, to make it happen. But um, th this is really all the, the pull work that I do uh, in the session. And then from here, we get into uh, the leg stuff. Uh, single leg leg extension to start. Uh, you'll notice that the yoga mat from the T-bar row has made its way over to the leg extension here. Uh, I'm just increasing the distance between my shin and the, uh, the the leg pad, the contact point on the leg extension so that I can get more of a stretch in the, the rectus femoris here uh, and, and really just kind of uh, put, put that muscle through more stretch because we know that uh, all muscles kind of benefit uh, greatly from stretch mediated hypertrophy. So just really kind of want to prioritize that uh, by getting that little addition of the yoga mat in there just just to kind of increase the the distance there so um, I use this single leg leg extension two times during the week uh, the, the clips that you're watching right now this is on my uh, non paused rep day so you'll notice that I am using like a pause in the peak contraction uh, but I wouldn't say that it's very exaggerated on my other workout, actually the, the workout that I posted right before this full body B, if you compare the reps on that video, you'll notice that I'm holding the peak contraction much, much longer on the full body B day. So um, obviously the, the numbers are going to be slightly different if I'm using like a three count pause in the, the fully contracted position versus just like a traditional pause uh, in there. So I kind of will toggle back and forth between paused and non paused reps here. And then I'll do the same thing with the regular bilateral leg extension. So I'm, I'm obviously doing the leg extension four times in the week. Two of those are uh, bilateral and then one of those is bilateral paused and then bilateral non-paused and then the other two times are unilateral paused and unilateral uh, non-paused. Uh, lying leg curl. Um, I have a lot of hamstring curls in this gym uh, available to me as well. We have like three lying leg curls, one seated ham curl, and then a standing leg curl. Um, I don't know what manufacturer makes this machine. This machine is very old and it doesn't have any brands written on it, uh, but I really, really like this one. Uh, you'll notice that I have uh, yoga mats in between my quads and the contact point on the, the, the leg curl here, and that's to allow constant tension uh, in the stretch when I come into uh, the bottom. With, without those yoga mats there, when I get into the stretch, the weight plates smack into each other, and I want there to be constant tension in the hamstrings, especially as I get into uh, this fully stretched position here. Um, this was the first time that I hit this weight today, so I only hit this for five, but I, I very much look forward to uh, progressing that going forward. And then the final exercise of the day is this 45 degree leg press, and I'm doing this leg press twice in the week right now. Uh, on one of the days, I do a light rep range where I'm aiming to fail in the eight to 12, and then uh, today is the heavy day where I'm aiming to fail in the five to eight. So um, this was the, the final set of the day, and I do kind of like to move the, the quad compound movement as the last exercise of the session uh, because I can go home when it's done. You know, th this particular exercise out of all the exercises that I do today, this is the one that causes the highest degree of fatigue per set uh, just because of all of the different muscles, groups, and everything that are involved in a, in a squatting pattern like this. And so I've kind of found uh, over the, the weeks and months of using the split that if I put this too early in the workout, uh, it, it just kind of kicks my ass so hard 
that everything that I do after uh, it uh, suffers in terms of performance. So I just feel like it's best put towards the end of the session. So that's going to bring us to the end of today's workout. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions or anything about the programming, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. And as always, take care of yourselves. Oh.